I'm not really sure about the bananas I'm missing for Diddy Kong. They might be in the first room. I don't know for sure. Like the first room of the level where we had to do the swinging. Anyways, these are Trough and Scoff. They're both pig-like dudes. And Trough is the one that can actually unlock the boss door for us. However, he can't get up there because he weighs too much. So what we have to do is we have to feed normal bananas to the other guy, Scoff. And basically we're going to give him obesity so we can actually pound the switch down. And get the other guy up there so he can turn the lock. I'm not sure how 60 bananas are supposed to like make you gain 100 pounds. But they apparently do. That's probably not even a hundred pounds, that's probably like five hundred pounds. But alas, the door will choose which Kong you need to um, use for the boss fight. In this boss fight, we're supposed to use Donkey Kong. So, let's get ready for the first boss fight of the game. The first boss we have to fight in this game is a giant metallic armadillo. His name is Armadillo. What a very, very creative name. Once again, a name only Rareware could come up with. So basically to fight this guy, all you have to do is uh, run around when he's firing fireballs at you. He'll do this a few times, but then he'll come out of his shell, so to speak, and you have to go up, grab the TNT barrel, and throw it in his face while he's laughing. And you only have to do this three times, so this is a very easy and very short boss fight. You really shouldn't have any trouble with it at all. And after you hit him in the face, you'll start to roll around the arena. Just, you know, keep ahead of him and stay away from him, and you should be fine. And then he'll just repeat the pattern over again. That's really all there is to this boss. Okay, there's hit number two. Kind of a fun fact, um, before this game actually came out on the Nintendo 64, um, whenever you'd go to stores and they'd have those, you know, playable demos of the game, um, there was a playable demo that had this boss fight, the second boss fight, and then the minecart minigame that I played earlier. So, um... Yeah, we've technically already experienced two of the things you can find on the demo cartridge if you can ever find that. I'm assuming those demo cartridges are hard to find since, you know, they're given to stores. But you never know, you might be able to run into one. But there we go, boss defeated. It really wasn't that hard at all. There we go, our first key of the game. Um, I don't know if I ever mentioned this yet, but there are eight keys total. Which you can obviously make the assumption that there are, you know, eight worlds in the game. Which is, you know, kind of true. Okay, so with that, we're done with Jungle Japes for right now. I mean, obviously we can go around and do a few other things if we want to. But it's not we're not actually going to get anywhere by doing those things. Uh, we actually have to wait until we unlock some of the other characters before we can come back here and, you know, fully complete the level. Uh, before I go, though, I want to make sure I collected all the bananas with Diddy Kong. I'm thinking that the final five bananas I need are just in the first room, so... I'm just going to take Diddy Kong over there to make sure and see if they are or not. Because I did say earlier on that I would try to get, you know, 100 bananas in the first world for every Kong, so... Okay, yep. I was right. So there we go, 100 bananas with Diddy Kong and Donkey Kong. I don't know, I might change those conditions later on. I mean, I guess I could always, you know, just go for 100% in every level anyways, but there really isn't a point for getting all the bananas. I'm not going to leave it up to the viewers, I'm not going to, you know, like... 
I, I don't know. I'll think about it, but, like, I'm not really that set on it, just to be honest with you guys. I will think about it, though, but I really don't see me changing those conditions at all. So now that we've completed that, we can go over here and we can actually, um, give K. Lumsey the first key. So let's go ahead and warp over there. And when we give him the key, he'll do his dance again. And when he does that, he will unlock the next area. So hooray for that. Uh, this area is actually located near the top of the island, so I will have to climb up there to get it. So in the meantime, since I actually have some video time left, and I don't plan to actually start the next world since I don't have that time right now. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pretty much just go around the overworld and start unlocking banana ports and stuff. Uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and get banana port number 5, which is over here at this island. Uh, this island is Banana Fairy Island. We can't do anything here yet because we need one of the unlockable characters before we can do anything here. But if you go to the back, I believe you can find a banana port. Okay, no, it's over here. Never mind. More so at the side of the island, not at the back of the island, but whatever. And there's also a glowing banana right here, but you need a character to actually get it. So we'll come back here later. Uh, the next banana port we're going to get is actually just behind the island. There really isn't much of a use to this banana port because it's really not that hard to get around this island. It's kind of a shortcut, like, from the beginning to World 5. But still, it's like not a very long walk, so it's not a very helpful warp. But still, it's right over here. And that would be banana port number three. And next, we're going to unlock banana port two, which is actually by the second world. Uh, we have to climb up there to get to it, though. So, yep, just climb up here, and we'll get there and get to there in no time. This probably will end up being a short video, and I do apologize for that, but I didn't actually take in, like, the time into consideration. It's, it's so hard to keep the time into consideration because, like, I mean, you don't know how much you're going to get done, and you still need to keep, like, you know, good video cuts in mind, too. Okay, so I'll grab one of these vines. And then, World 2 is just a walk up these stairs. Okay, so there we go. Banana port number 2 is accessed. And just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and walk in here. Just to see what the lobby is all about. In here, we actually have two Diddy Gongs. Uh, to activate these gongs, you have to Chimpy Charge into them. However, they unlock a uh, golden banana we can't quite get yet, because once again we need another character, so I'm not going to worry about that for right now. Let's just go up here and uh, open the door to Angry Aztec. You need only five golden bananas for this, so you could technically just get all of Donkey Kong's bananas and Jungle Japes and just come here, but eh, not a big deal. It's kind of easier to get Diddy Kong's bananas out of the way, too. Uh, but anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video right here. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to, um, when I start the next recording, if I'm going to, you know, just resume at this point or start the next video. It kind of depends on how short this video ends up being. So, I'll see you in the next video or in just a few seconds for more. Let's play Donkey Kong 64. Later, guys. Hello, everybody. Slim Kirby here. Welcome back to more Let's Play Donkey Kong 64. I did have a little bit of time at the end of uh, video 5, so this is still going to be part of video 5. But I am going to go ahead and start Angry Aztec in this video, so let's get started. Uh, Angry Aztec is really... Oh wait, cutscene. Forgot about the cutscene. Aw, poor Armadillo.
Well, guess what, K. Rule? We are going to ruin your plans, so you better get over it. Anyways, as I was saying before I was brutally interrupted by the cutscene, is that um, this level is actually a lot more complex than uh, Jungle Japes, if you couldn't figure out already. I mean, obviously, they're, they're going to get more difficult and more complex anyways, but still. Um, basically, uh, this level kind of introduces the concept that is pretty much used throughout the rest of the game, where a lot of the levels, you really have to open up a lot of the stuff before you actually get anything done. Uh, there's a lot of different areas and a lot of different um, sections of each world, and before you can even access them with the Kongs you're supposed to, you might have to actually open them up with another Kong. Uh, this really isn't an example. This itself is a Donkey Kong room, but I can't really do anything right now because I need a new move, which we actually get in this world, so... I'll come back here a little later, but um, sections like this are kind of introduced in this like first room up here. Um, you have to do a lot of different uh, Kong switching techniques before you can actually really get anywhere in this level to begin with. And over here we have a captured llama. So we got to do something to help him, which we will, we'll definitely help him, but first uh, there's a few things I'll have to do first. Um, over here is actually Candy's Music Shop. Uh, that is the first thing I'm going to do, so I'll go ahead and get that done. Basically, what Candy Kong offers you in this game are a wide variety of instruments. Each Kong has one specific instrument, and basically what you can do with these instruments is that you can play them and they will... Uh, send out a musical blast which will kill all enemies on screen and there's also a few areas that can only open up if you play your musical instrument on the instrument pad so um, we're gonna buy DK's instrument right now which is the bongo blast whenever you see a bongo pad you can play the bongo blast on it and you can usually open something up And basically all you do to play the instrument is press the Z button and then also press the C up button as well. Now of course there is a cost to using your musical instruments as I'll show you right now. Um, you have a little counter down there and if you uh, waste that counter down to zero you can't use your instruments anymore so uh, be sure to keep that in mind. You don't want to waste all your musical power because you'll never know when you'll actually need your instruments, so just don't waste them and you should be okay. Uh, next, I'm going to go ahead and get Diddy's musical instruments because I'll actually need that uh, before I can actually move on, so best to get his musical instrument while we're here as well. I'm going to go ahead and skip some of this text because we've already seen it. And Diddy has the guitar gazump. Basically, same as the Bongo Blast, if you find a guitar pad, you can play your instrument there, and you will usually open something up, and you can also use the two KO enemies on the screen as well. Okay, let's get back over here, and let's not touch the quicksand this time. Now, the first thing we're going to do while we're here is... Hey, there's some DK Bananas up here. I'll be sure to grab those uh, very quickly when I switch back to DK. Uh, but over here, we have some vines... So let's grab onto them and swing over here. And sure enough, we find the guitar pad. So let's rip out the guitar. And that will actually open this little block cave entrance over here. And that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. You really do need like a variety of the Kongs to actually get through uh, certain parts of the levels. So... That's kind of an example, kind of a mini example. Uh, there's later areas in the game that, you know, require you to almost use every single Kong to actually get farther. Oh yeah, if you couldn't tell, we also got a melon upgrade from Candy as well, which allows us to hold 
uh, two melons instead of just one, so our uh, life bar practically got doubled just then. 